Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I would like to talk about anthroponics. The name anthroponics derives from the word or the prefix anthropo meaning human or man and ponics from hydroponics which is a soilless cultivation using nutrient solutions. So anthroponics is then a recirculating soilless agriculture system that uses natural bacterial cycles to convert human bio-waste such as urine, feces or both into plant fertilizer. In this video, I will be focusing mainly on urine, as that is what I have done the most re research in. Urine anthroponics, most people would call pea ponics or urine ponics. And concerning the other types of potential anthroponics, there is some research, but uh, I have not worked so much with that, so I will focus mostly with the urine. But first, we have to ask why there is interest in using urine and hydroponics. I would really say that the biggest concern has been how to find a cheap, renewable and safe source of nutrient. And then within that part, we have the more detailed environmental concerns. We have the lack of nutrient recovery in current wastewater treatment. We have, of course, the waste of fresh water in conventional agriculture and even in hydroponic systems. We also have the energy use in mineral nutrient sourcing, as you may or may not be aware. In conventional hydroponics and mineral hydroponics, most of the nutrients come from mines. They are mined from the earth. They are transported, refined. All of this wastes a lot of energy and, of course, emits a lot of greenhouse gases. The alternative used to be or is still considered to be aquaponics as a more sustainable source. Even in aquaponics, fish feed sometimes has a very big environmental impact because not all the fish feed is sustainable. Sometimes it is fished from the oceans and also has to be processed and transported and all of that has a lot of energy use and of course greenhouse emissions. Then we have also the economic issues. Despite hydroponics being a very precise way of growing and cultivating plants, the mineral nutrient solutions can be very expensive and they are not as widely available throughout the world as we would like to think. Both mineral nutrient solutions and a balanced fish feed are not available or cheap everywhere in the world, so perhaps an alternative is needed where we can circumvent this issue. But what is urine? Urine is actually mainly water, with the remaining components, and these are very small components as you can see in percentage points, being urea and dissolved ions and organic molecules which include chloride, sodium, potassium and creatinine. Despite being very diluted, urine can be a very powerful fertilizer. So how exactly do we convert the urine into something that the plants can absorb? This is where I will get a little bit technical as I walk you through all the different steps. First, we start with urea. Urea is volatilized into carbamic acid and then finally to ammonia, and this process increases the pH to 9, which prevents the growth of any harmful bacteria. Then the ammonia and ammonium go back and forth in their different forms depending on the pH of the solution. And then both are finally passed through a biofilter containing nitrifying bacteria, which create nitrates. The first group of nitrifying bacteria take the ammonia and convert it to nitrite, NO2, and then the last group of nitrifying bacteria convert it to nitrite and then produce nitrate as a result. Finally, the plants can take these nitrates and other micro and micronutrients and clean the water, which is always recirculating. As is the case with aquaculture and aquaponics, also in anthroponics we use the nitrifying pathway, where we take the ammonia, as I've mentioned before, pass it to nitrite and then to nitrate. Here you can see all the different types of pathways available for nitrogen, but in the top is really where the focus is. Here you can also see the different groups responsible for each of these steps. Regarding ammonia oxidation, we have both bacteria and archaea for filling the role of converting ammonium into nitrite and then the nitrite is converted to nitrate by also a different group of bacteria. Here I have compiled a list of relevant literature concerning anthroponics. I took this list actually from the Wikipedia page and this list includes both urine only anthroponics and also combined wastewater that is wastewater with feces and urine that also has been used to grow plants. I will provide the link to all of this research below in the description of the video. Of course, in anthroponics, not all is solved yet. In anthroponics, even just in urine anthroponics, there still remains a lot of challenges. Here I have listed some of these challenges. These include 
how do we take care of the hormones and drugs that may be in the urine. These are not currently addressed in the method I have described above on how to convert the, the urine into something that the plants can absorb. So this is why it's usually recommended that if you are going to try and grow plants in this way using urine, you should make sure that the urine that you are sourcing from, whether your own or from someone else, that that person is not taking any sort of hormonal medication or any sort of drugs. Then of course there is the odor and handling issue. Urine is, despite being more pleasant, relatively speaking, to handle than feces or even combined wastewater, it's still not a very pleasant experience. The ammonia especially has a very intense smell, which makes the handling particularly difficult. Then of course we have the perception of the public regarding plants being cultivated in this way. It would be very difficult to sell any plants grown from urine in a market, not only because there are laws specifically against it, but also in the public's perception it is something not seen very well, even though most of our crops are currently grown from cow manure, for example. There have also been some nutrient deficiencies that I have observed in all the trials that I have done with anthroponics and urine. And this is not clear yet if it's because of the urine that I have been using or if it's because of just the content of the urine does not have enough of the nutrients needed. And of course, the greater challenge is how to integrate this potential to use urine and other wastewater to grow plants into the wider wastewater treatment and the infrastructure that already exists throughout the world. So this was a first introductory video about anthroponics and peaponics, where I have explained more or less how the process goes. In future videos, I will be talking specifically about all the different experiments I have done, where I will show you footage, results, all of that. So I hope with this you have a little bit of an idea of how it works and, and hopefully you'll be able to understand my future videos better when I show you the experiments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.